like the guys. Melbourne Airport, Australia, flying to Los Angeles on a Dreamliner 787. And guess what we're doing today, folks? We're going to be detecting carbon air quality on a Dreamliner. Dr. Cos has his gadgets, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, PM 2.5, I repeat, particulate matter 2.5. I'm very curious to see what type of air quality is on a long haul flight. Yes, 15 hour flight, folks. The all. sunset coming into Los Angeles Airport from the approach in Long Beach if you look down you could probably see some of the ships in the port of Long Beach but this is a magnificent flight okay folks time to conclude what we experienced we were detecting carbon monoxide carbon dioxide and PM 2.5 consistently on both flights to Melbourne and coming back from Melbourne carbon monoxide was zero PM 2.5 was pretty much always zero. That means no exhaust gas with carbon monoxide was coming into the cabin. That's good news. And also it means, it tells me that the environmental control system, what they call the ECS, that controls the ventilation in the plane has a good HEPA filter, has a good filter that filters the particles, filters the dust, filters the particulate matter 2.5. And that's a good thing for all the passengers. The area of concern was carbon dioxide. You saw in the videos, you saw in my little clips. It was elevated. Government agencies, air quality associations, tell us that anything above 1,000 ppm is bad. It's problematic. It's an area of concern. And it doesn't surprise me. Hundreds of people in the confined space on this jetliner, breathing in and out, obviously will increase the carbon dioxide level. Okay, folks? It did not surprise me. Now, I'm bringing this up because you saw the results. You saw the CO2 monitor and you could see it's elevated. Now, it is a little bit of concern, especially in this post-COVID world. As we know, transmissivity of infections, of pathogens, of SARS, of COVID virus, of influenza does occur in aerosol format via air, via us breathing in someone's exhalation. And CO2 is a proxy for that. This has been validated research scientists and everyone else has validated this is real folks that's why dr kaiser is bringing this up as um, a red flag it was a problem i would have loved to have seen this co to be below a thousand ppm but it was not and that's why i'm highlighting it folks okay now the other area of concern well, this was the smell of kerosene during engine startup. We've all been there, we've all experienced and smelt that kerosene smell coming in as we're taxiing and, and as the engines are starting up. And I did indeed smell that on this 787 Dream One. It's virtually a brand new aircraft. This is still going on. Now, I didn't take any more elaborate spectroscopic measurements of these long chain hydrocarbons, of these organophosphates that may have been there. Um, I did not do that, folks. This was not a scientifically perfect research analysis here of the air quality in the cabin. It was not. It was my nose telling me there was some kerosene vapors, among others, possibly. Now, there is something called aerotoxic syndrome. Aerotoxic syndrome that people experience ill health effects because they fly frequently, such as the cabin crew, such as pilots, flight attendants, etc., etc. That are possible carcinogenic vapors that people breathe in often and create issues, especially as I mentioned, organophosphate and many others that come from lubricants in the fuel, from the fuel itself. Okay, folks, so this is a real cabin air quality problem 
for people that fly frequently, such as the cabin crew. Okay, folks, so I do want to pay my respects and I do want to mention that and it's an important issue for that to be on our radar. Okay, look, that's what we've done, folks. I've had a great flight now. Fly safe, be well, and stay healthy. See you soon.